Hello dear students my name is professor Sudhir Bisht and I teach business marketing at Delhi Technical Campus or DTC at Greater Noida This course is the this subject is taught in the final semester of MBA of Guru Gobind Singh IP University As you know we have already covered unit 1 in the unit 1 what we studied is the nature and scope of business marketing so when i say business marketing once again b2b marketing okay and b2b marketing existed existed much before the internet age okay when all these companies which were selling industrial products when they were selling uh, their machinery or their raw material or their equipment to factories it was b2b marketing even when large fmcg companies were selling their fmcg products or consumer durables which are consumer goods but to retailers or to wholesalers this also was b2b marketing okay so we 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 have learned what is the nature and scope of business marketing we understood various type of business markets institutional markets you know uh, government markets commercial markets and uh, we also covered the evolution of business markets in india in in that short lecture i explained to you and all of this is contained in my uh, channel and the playlist which is uh, business marketing or b2b marketing and we also understood the organizational buying and buyer behavior very important aspect we have already covered is buyer seller relationship in the buyer seller relationship i explained to you how from transactional relationship which is from transaction to transaction the good sellers and the professional buyers they move from transactional relationship to a long term collaborative relationship because as i explained that more than 70% of all that is sold it happens under b2b markets so it is important that even the buyers they become more and more professionals it is uh, very good for all the selling organizations to understand what their buyer really needs so buyer seller relationship is not a adversarial relationship or it's not a relationship which is purely personal okay you have to professionally analyze understand what the buyer wants and you have to look after his non professional needs also in terms of he wants respect he wants collaboration right uh, so between buyer and seller there has to be a collaborative relationship that i explained to you the spectrum of buyer seller relationship i explained to you i also explained to you in unit 1 segmentation in b2b markets in fact i got a lot of uh, questions from uh, industry uh, people also they were asking me to explain it further and i did explain to them what is meant by segmentation like just you have demographic segmentation you have firmographic segmentation i explained to you how how business uh, marketers b2b marketers they segment their market i explained to you targeting and i explained to you positioning in business markets right in unit 2 in unit 2 we will discuss what is meant by industrial product how do we classify industrial products we will also discuss product strategies product strategies for business markets product strategies are all those strategies which you deploy to achieve your marketing aim organizational aim we will also discuss new product development and innovations for business markets so new product development also is it's akin to the product development in consumer uh, segment uh, but there are nuanced differences we will also understand brand management for business markets and uh, we will also discuss direct and indirect distribution channels in business markets so how to design that channel structure we will understand and we will also try to uh, cover logistics and supply chain decision for business markets so what i have done is i have uh, kind of divided these 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 this seven topics into uh, six six lectures so today i will explain to you the industrial product classification i hope uh, you will enjoy this lecture in this slide i have uh, tried to explain uh, what is meant by types of business market consumers and i have taken this from b2b marketing a south asian perspective by Michael D Hart and Dheeraj Sharma and Thomas Peck so i have given the credit to them and this uh, illustration is from them so what do the author, uh, just to explain how have they how have these authors uh, 
divided business market consumers into various types. So first is uh, commercial customers, manufacturers, all the manufacturers of uh, B2B of, of industrial products or even consumer products. They also need uh, to source from somewhere. For example, if you if you if you take the if you take uh, the the uh, the jacket that I am wearing, okay, this jacket is manufactured by uh, Raymond's. So Raymond's must have sourced these buttons from somewhere, right? And they must have sourced the cloth from somewhere, then they must have manufactured it. Maybe they would have outsourced the manufacturing also, and maybe they're just doing branding and uh, selling and retailing portion. So these, this is meant by manufacturers. Another example of manufacturers can be uh, any, 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 uh, any car automobile manufacturer, which is sourcing various components or a PC manufacturer, then construction companies, large construction companies. So large construction companies, they also form commercial customers. So they are using a lot of uh, equipment. Some of the equipment they could be leasing also. Okay. A lot of uh, earth movers and cranes and hydraulic lifts and what have you. So construction companies are also uh, commercial customers. They also, they also buy services of manpower. So if you see a large project, a large housing project of, let us say, Tata Housing, so it is not uh, necessary. And why, why I'm saying it is not necessary? It is actually, uh, I, I can say that the workers who work there, they don't, they are not uh, hired directly by the uh, Tata Construction Company or the or any other company. They are, they are, there are contractors who provide these services. Okay, and there are various subcontractors who are providing services to the housing project construction companies service firms service firms are service firms they also uh, need services uh, suppose there is a company which is providing consultancy services and they need to they need services in case of arbitration uh, for some clients so they may hire an arbitration expert transportation companies with the, the, the fleet of operators the, those who you for example uh, UPSRTC, Uttar Pradesh State Trading Corporation, State uh, Transport Corporation or Delhi Transport Corporation. Selected professional groups who form a company, uh, they also need commercial, uh, they also need uh, commercial suppliers, those who will supply them services. Wholesalers, wholesalers are the customers for whom? They are customers for selling companies. So Cadbury's has wholesalers, uh, Nestle has wholesalers. What do wholesalers do? They don't consume that product. They intend sell this product to the uh, to the areas or to the markets where the uh, companies don't reach directly because they may finding it un uneconomical or for whatever reason. So wholesalers are large commercial customers. Uh, if if you see if you see around Delhi, around Delhi, uh, inside Delhi on the bordering. On the on the bordering hamlets of Delhi, you will find a lot of wholesale markets. Okay, so you will find that the farmers they bring fresh vegetables to these markets, and from there they go to a central market. So these are wholesalers. Retailers, retailers are also part of B2B from retailer because retailers sell to customers, but retailers, retailers buy from companies or they buy from wholesalers. Sometimes the companies supply directly to the retailers themselves. Sometimes the retailers they will go to a they will go to a wholesale market. For example, I uh, my my grandfather had a tiny shop uh, in a in a place called Nani Danda, and he will go to the wholesale market in Dumakot. Th these are places in Uttarakhand. So when I used to go there for my vacations, I would see. So he was a retailer. He will go to the wholesale market. So he was a commercial customer. On the on the other extreme, you find government customers, which are federal government. By federal government, perhaps they mean the union government. Huh? Uh, yes, they mean union government. So non-defense customers, defense customers. What are non-defense customers? Like you know, uh, let's take the let's take the case of uh, Steel Authority India Limited, which is a public sector enterprise. It is not a defense or Indian Oil Corporation. Indian Oil Corporation buys a lot of uh, fuel, uh, or a lot of crude from. From maybe from US, Saudi Arabia, Middle East, Iraq, wherever, defense equipment. So a lot of French companies, a lot of Israeli companies, a lot of Russian companies, uh, they sell directly to the government. Huh? Uh, right? Like like Rafael has been supplied by uh, French the, the French uh, public sector undertaking. Then state governments also buy. Like I gave you the example of uh, uh, state companies like 
Urisa paper mill. There used, I don't know whether it is still uh, there or not, but there used to be a paper mill which was run by the state government. Okay. Then counties, municipalities, and townships. By counties and townships, we can say municipalities or uh, you know uh, like, like NDMC or South Delhi Municipal Corporations. In between, there are institutional customers. Institutional customers are those people who generally provide welfare kind of service to the uh, society okay institutional customers this is what this is what this author means you can have your own interpretation but i'm trying to explain the perspective of this author so schools colleges universities now when you sell to school colleges universities uh, there has to be a different kind of a strategy you will all agree with me you cannot be you cannot have the same marketing strategy uh, for let us say you are selling to a, a hindustan unilever factory or you are selling to kendra vidyalaya sangathan Okay, which runs all these central schools. So you need to have different kind of uh, marketing strategies, tactics for this. Healthcare organizations, whether private or the government, they are institutional customers, libraries, foundations, large foundations, uh, National, National Center for Performing Arts, for example. Okay, and then clinics and various things. So these are type of uh, business market customers. Now that we have understood what are the different type of customers, we will go for uh, yet another classification which is how do we classify goods okay we have classified the markets in the next slide i will explain to you how do we classify the b2b goods or b2b services so this is how we classify the goods for business markets or b2b markets and this is the classification done by philip kotler uh, in his book marketing management analysis planning and control and i have taken it straight from there but actually not from this book but this has been cited in the uh, previous book which i which i mentioned in the previous slide okay but the credit for this goes to philip kotler marketing management analysis planning and control you will find that in all my slides i am giving proper credit uh, to the authors or to the publications so i would like to thank all these great minds which have helped me uh, to come up with this lecture for my students. So goods have been classified by great professor Philip Kotler into three categories. One is entering goods. Entering as in the sense which enters into some system. So one is entering goods, other is foundation goods and the third is facilitating goods. So let me explain briefly what is meant by uh, each of this. Entering goods, it consists of raw materials, for example, if you're making, if you are, if you are in the business of making bread, so you will need wheat flour, or if not wheat flour, at least wheat. <laughs> only then you will grind the wheat and make a powder of it, and only then will you make bread. So uh, one entering goods are something like raw material. For example, wheat in the case of a farm product, or uh, let us say natural products like uh, if you if you are in the business of making. Uh, let us say fencing, you make fencing, galvanized iron fencing, okay, which you find galvanized iron fencing means this iron fencing which is uh, hot dipped galvanized so that it doesn't rust. If you are in the business of that, so for that you need iron, isn't it? You will need iron mesh which you will galvanize. So natural products like you know iron ore. If you if you are a if you if you are uh, a steel manufacturing companies you will need iron ore okay you will also need coal okay if you are a power generating company you will need coal so entering goods can be classified into raw material and manufactured material manufactured material means those manufactured material which are used as a component so raw materials which is used as a raw material these are both classification of entering goods raw material which is incorporated as a raw material and manufactured material or parts like uh, suppose I am Maruti uh, and I have outsourced the uh, task of making doors to a uh, to, to, to a to a partner. Okay, so that is a manufactured part which is a entering good. Where, where is it entering? It is entering the car. It is entering in the process of the car. Okay, for example, if I am uh, uh, if I am Mahindra and Mahindra I am making tractors, but Mahindra is not making. To my knowledge, it is not making manufacturing tires. It is procuring tires from somewhere, maybe from uh, maybe from Apollo, maybe from Dunlop, maybe from Goodyear or TVS, uh, Shri Chakra, some whatever. So this also is a 
entering good so entering goods raw material and manufactured material then we come to foundation goods what are foundation goods where do you build a factory on a piece of land okay so land is it not a good it's an asset right but you buy the land from somewhere isn't it or you want to start a you, you want to uh, i want to start a call center and my call center serves a foreign bank let us say bank of america and my call center is in noida i am i am taking a case i am assuming okay so for that do i need a building yes <laughs> where i need to house my people okay they will come in shifts and they will answer calls or suppose i am providing back office service so i need an office i need a building so this is foundation good because this is something which is fixed it is normally not moved or fixed equipment like laptops not laptops like let us say uh, terminals computers what about the elevators suppose i have got the land i have land i have purchased and i am going to uh, construct a building myself for it fine i will need elevators so these are foundation goods they are not entering goods but they are required for your business to start you know with, without an elevator uh, how will you ma manage to go to the 13th floor then there are certain these are also you should understand these are normally capital items capital and not revenue items in the sense that uh, they are not consumables they are foundation goods then there are accessory equipments which is also a part of foundation good Uh, like a forklift you know what is a forklift which will lift a heavy thing from here to here so there is a forklift which is lifting a 210 liter drum which you call barrel in india actually a barrel means 159 liter container but in india we call every container a barrel which is a cylindrical kind of a thing and normally it contains 210 liters so a barrel a, a forklift which lifts a barrel from here to here or something like uh, like a workstations not pcs workstations so these are all foundation goods so entering goods i have explained i have explained foundation goods now let me explain facilitating goods facilitating goods are again they are not foundation goods because they are not uh, they are not like capital items they are not entering goods also because they are not used as consume as raw material or manufactured items which is used in the main part if you are in the office you you need paper yeah you need paper to write on you need paper to print of course <laughs> many offices will go paperless but still some office you need for statutory compliances and what have you you need paper right you need ink you need uh, if you are running a machine a machine will come under foundation good all right but you will need the oil for the machine right and uh, you will need fuel for the machine so supplies which are operating supplies like lubricants like paper or which are used for maintenance maintenance and repair items screws you need screws or uh, uh, you need also uh, you need maintenance services maintenance services also you need then there are other business services which you will need like suppose you are you need specialized legal service you need you want to advertise your product in mass media your no 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 commercial organization has got that expertise not even hindustan unilever they also go to some company in good old days they used to go to uh, linda san hta or rediffusion these are advertising companies so facilitating goods are those goods which provide uh, supplies like operating uh, operating supplies or maintenance and repair or business services like uh, legal advisory advertising advisory consulting services or any specialized uh, legal so like i i came across uh, i came across a, 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 a middle sized company around 100 crores it was frantically looking for a gst specialist 4 years ago which could introduce them to gst 
because their own CFO, their own accountants had no knowledge of it, and they could not go to big companies like you know uh, BDO or uh, any other company. So they they were looking uh, frantically for some a, a, a GST specialist who could explain to them uh, how would they transit from the VAT based structure to GST based structure. So this is the classification goods for uh, business market entering goods, foundation goods, facilitating goods. So do, is there any other way people can classify it? Well, let us see. Another classification has been given here. Uh, and this has this I have taken uh, from uh, business to business marketing, but uh, perhaps uh, I will explain that in the next slide. So I thought I should uh, give the perspective of another author also. And uh, this is from uh, Business to Business Marketing, Relationship Systems and Communication by Chris Phil and Karen E. Phil, which is Prentice Hall publication. So uh, these authors have defined uh, or they have categorized business goods as input goods. So same as entering goods, but they call it input goods, which is raw material and uh, semi semi manufactured parts, which become finished items. I think this is also a very good uh, uh, kind of a categorization input goods. So uh, all raw material or all semi finished parts uh, which become part of the finished item. But you know uh, even finished part for example a braking system of, for a for a for a for a two wheeler it's a finished part but uh, it is an input to the overall scooter or the motorcycle right input goods. Second classification uh, done by uh, Chris Phil and Karen uh, Phil is equipment goods in this they have taken capital items that are not finished uh, that that are not part of finished items like but they are necessary to enable the production process like I explained to you in the previous segment land buildings and third is supply goods supply goods are material necessary to keep the production process electricity oil gas suppose there is a fertilizer which has gas based right the energy is uh, gas based uh, gas authority india limited it has a pipeline from hazira to various places and it supplies piped gas uh, which is the methane uh, basically natural gas to various fertilizer plants so this is supply goods and how important is this supply good but perhaps the gas gas line uh, of uh, gale uh, should be uh, it can be classified both under supply goods and uh, input goods uh, to, to my mind or something like coal if the coal is used for if the coal is used for producing uh, electricity then the coal uh, then coal will be uh, under uh, I think supply goods but if the coal is used as a raw material to produce something else let us say steel okay uh, or it, 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 it is a raw material for uh, something else like for a cement manufacturing plant even in a even in a minuscule percentage it will become a input good so either classification is good this classification of categorization of business goods as input goods equipment goods and supply goods is okay and the previous one where it was entering goods and uh, uh, foundation uh, foundation goods and the third the third was uh, the facilitating goods that was also okay so you can use uh, either of the uh, you can you can accept either of the uh, explanations I found the first one slightly better but it, it's your choice students can you know uh, use any of the authors both are both are right uh, in their own way So what are the what are the attributes and properties of uh, business products? Attribute and properties, attributes or property, both is correct. Attribute basically is a property which we can say is caused by something, okay? Uh, for for which somebody is responsible. If a product is responsible for something, or if it exhibits a property, we say it is this ad attribute. If you will recall that when we were doing uh, attributes of consumer uh, goods, we also studied, you know, uh, attributes. So in in 
in B2B marketing also it is quite similar. So there are two types of attributes actually of a business product. Attributes and properties are the same thing. Uh, properties and attributes are same. So one is the core, one is the tangible, what is the tangible attribute? Tangible attribute is something which can be felt, which can be seen immediately, which is palpable, conspicuous by its presence, tangible. So tangible attribute also is uh, divided into you know, uh, core and augmented. Let me explain this to you by giving examples. In fact, I have given examples in the next two slides. I have given example of an industrial product, which is a cooler, air cooler. And I have taken the example of a, a oil company, lubricating company called Castrol. But here, attribute, uh, core, core attribute is something which is the basic feature and which describes the simple capability of a product. Okay. This is the generic product offering in the market. So all will all will offer this core attribute. So if I am if I am uh, supplying, let us say, a aircraft to airline company. So the core product is the aeroplane or the aircraft, and it has basic features like you know uh, it has certain number of seats. It flies in the air. It uh, it runs on uh, aviation turbine fuel or aviation turbine kerosene. It is called sometimes ATK or ATF. In India, we call it ATF. Some countries call it ATK, and that it can land. It has got this. It has got that. Uh, it has got how many engines? It has got what is the seating plan? So these are core. Okay. So it, this is like Boeing and Airbus. What what is the core product? Core product is. Of course, they have product lines. So core product is aeroplane or the aircraft. In tangible, there is another thing called augmented. Augmented means kind of feature which is added to the core product, which is added to the core product. Maybe extra facility, maybe enhanced performance, which distinguishes you, which distinguishes you from the current offering or from the other offering so it can augment augmentation can come in the form of even brand name it can come in the form of packaging it can come in the form of quality achievement or fittings and attachments so these are augmented they are it is not the core product it is not the core product but it is Something which can be seen, felt, realized distinctly and which gives a differentiation, which gives a differentiation. For example, if I tell you that uh, I have got, I have got this uh, aircraft, uh, if it, uh, it, it, it has got, it has got a third engine, it's a hypothetical, there is no I don't think the aircraft which is which has got a, which got three engine or maybe I don't know. So, uh, apart from twin engine which has got a third emergency engine augmented product or if I say if I say that I will provide I will provide an oil to you in for a to a industry I will provide a oil and I will draw samples after every 200 hours and I will analyze the sample and I will tell you how is your machine performing. You see a heavy machine. There is a lot of friction when a machine runs. So the oil is supposed to reduce that friction to keep that machine cool. So after every 200 hours of the machine running or the engine running, I will take the oil. I will send it to an for analysis to my lab. So if it has got some metallic parts in it, that means the oil is not doing its job. But presence of lot lot of metallic part means the metal is uh, getting worn out so i will provide this to you this service to you this is augmented so core product is oil everybody is providing oil huh? something like that then there are intangible so tangible i have explained to you core and augmented then there are intangible intangible is you can't see it you can you cannot feel it but it provides a kind of a atmosphere 
around a product. Basically, technical services, financial services, extra warranty. Suppose I I supply uh, I supply a UPS large UPS, and I say that my UPS, if it is maintained by me, if it is serviced by me, it will have a lifetime of 10 years. It is extraordinary, isn't it? Or if I say that uh, uh, I will, I will, if, if I am supplying, let us say, a uh, lot of batteries to a large laboratory, okay, where the moment the power goes, the battery wake up starts. I say, I will ensure, I will ensure that the batteries are replaced by me and I will not charge you for battery, but I will charge you for a service. This is an intangible, what are you providing? You are providing battery, but you say the battery ownership will remain with you, the, the supplier, the on a monthly basis and the buyer should have complete peace of mind. I will ensure that batteries are replaced when they are replaced. I will, of course, I will sign a long term contract with you. Okay. So something like this. So you have to devise, you can have your own example. When you become a B2B seller, how do you devise these things? You devise these things by very closely, very closely studying your customer. What is the basic thing he is needing? Apart from the which is core product, which is the basic thing he needs, your customer needs. So what can you add to the basic things augmentation to make your products different from the customer? Tangible and intangible. Intangible, it's an atmosphere around the product. Can you say can you say, I will advise you a product upgrade free of cost or I will analyze all your requirements and give a free advice to you, a free consultation. I remember in a company which had hired a small advertising company for a campaign. They had, they had uh, called him, actually they had called this advertising company to make uh, for them a holding, just a holding. Now this young, vibrant advertising company, they came to provide a holding. What is a holding which you find across uh, on the sides of the roads that large holdings which announce something, painted something. So the core product, tangible product was a holding. So they were asked to provide the creative for the holding, only creative. But they said, don't bother. We will not only provide the creative for the holding, but for the same price you give to a vendor who actually books that uh, physical space and who actually mounts that holding, we will provide this service also, augmented service. And we will provide at a price which matches your current. So give us end to end. And not only that, if we think that the creative is not working, we will change the creative free of cost for you. So core product supplying of creative for the holding augmented product. We will erect it also place it there also intangible. If the creative doesn't work now, how will the creative not work? How will you analyze it? These are questions of detail. These are matters of detail, but see the intangible. If the creative doesn't work, I promise I will change the creative myself intangible and then he said we also will like to do a brand assessment survey of your brand free of cost now when you are when you are doing such intangible when you are doing such uh, intangible offerings you are entering into next stage with the customer you remember in the consumers business we said core product in consumers, core product, augmented product and potential product. Potential product is in, this is how Kotler had defined in consumer business. He said that the 
potential product is what you can offer in the future. So here he's already offering to do a free. So this is how you as students of management must know how one opportunity can open the doors for many more opportunities. So I am adding this. So tangible, intangible and potential, right? So you have now understood the attributes and properties of business products. In the next slide, I'll give you an example of two companies to explain this further. In this slide, let me explain to you uh, the product attributes of Castrol India lubricants. And I have taken the uh, industrial lubricant segment, you know, Castrol is a very respected company worldwide. BP Castrol it is known now because I think BP purchased it around five, six years ago. So Castrol India Limited is, it was not so much respected in industrial products earlier, but uh, around uh, 2000 in, in, in around 2000, it started to make rapid forays into industrial product segment. And today it is one of the most respected companies, not only in automobiles, automotive sector, but also in uh, industrial sector. So earlier Castrol was very good in bazaar trade as they call. So you could find Castrol lubricants uh, because they were not available at petrol stations. You know, petrol stations used to sell their own lubricants. So, But Castrol, uh, the greatness about a company is how it is able to create an alternate channel, alternative channels for itself. So Castrol is a great company and they have uh, they may not be leadership position in uh, industrial lubricants yet because I think still Indian Oil Corporation would be the leader in industrial product, but Castrol has grown by leaps and bound. So I studied them in some markets. So for their industrial lubricant uh, customers, they provide what is the core product? Core product is uh, industrial lubricant, which is SAE grade. SAE grade means uh, SAE is Society of Automobile Engineers. So depending upon viscosity grades, you sell lubricants. So SKE, SAE 30, 40, 50, like something like that. So the core product is industrial lubricant. What does lubricant do? L lubricant, it reduces friction and you know, it enhances the metallic parts of the engine and uh, it cools the uh, engine. Engine. It has many products, you know, it, it has many uh, functions, but chief function is to provide lubrication, isn't it, to, for a layman. So the core product is any SAE grade industrial lubricant. I thought, and this is purely my definition, this is not uh, Castrol's definition, but as a, as a person who respects Castrol, uh, and I have been Castrol's competitor for uh, uh, more than 15, 16, 17 years, but you know, you must respect a, a competitor which which deserves that respect. So what is their augmented product? I always found they were the first one who used to do used oil analysis. What is meant by used oil analysis? You see, for example, you are you are taking the case of a, a large furnace, uh, large furnace, which is run on furnace oil. Uh, furnace means in which things get heated up and all. So to for their engine oil, so you need to change the engine oil, let us say after, I am just taking a case after 250 hours, assuming, you know, after 250 hours, you need to change the oil. And uh, Castrol, when it came up with a superior product, it would suppose, and I am again explaining hypothetically, uh, don't attribute this to any technical specification of Castrol. Suppose it says instead of 250 hours, I will, um, you, you have to change my oil for uh, after 500 hours. So it's a straight saving of 100% of saving, 50% uh, saving immediately, you know. Why 50%, you know, more than 50% saving. So, but how do you prove it? So augmented product, I will do your used oil analysis. After 250 hours, I will take the sample of your oil. They will come, they will send it to the lab and they've got uh, ISO uh, accredited labs, very fine labs. And then they will send a analysis and you know it's it's also a matter of uh, respect for a brand normally if i am the seller and i am using my own lab to analyze a sample you can uh, cast aspersion on it but it's you know people normally like even indian oil corporation when they take a oil sample or exxon mobil so when i was working for so petroleum nobody ever uh, suspected 
oil companies are highly respected companies. So augmented product is used oil analysis, mostly free of cost. And apart from that, there is an intangible product which Castrol provides. It is called Castrol Tech, Serv uh, Tech Service. What is Castrol Tech Service? Suppose you have been using a particular SAE grade of industrial lubricants. Castrol will send a team of experts, technical experts, who will advise you in selling the right product. Even if you are not using castrol oil there, suppose there is a gear oil you are using. So castrol engineers will come and tell you that you don't need gear oil of this grade. You need of that grade. Even if you are not using castrol oil. And they never will push you for that. Castrol tech service. But the, however, in the... If you analyze, if somebody is giving you a technical service, you, you have confidence in that. Eventually, you will switch over to them. So this is core product is SAE grade industrial lubricants, augmented product, which is distinguishing Castrol. And I'm talking of a scenario many years ago. Maybe now every company is doing used oil analysis. At least ExxonMobil used to do for sure. ExxonMobil used to do. And intangible uh, product is Castrol tech service, where they're highly respected uh, professionals will come and they will give you advice on the uh, on on the energy stuff which you are using intangible so this is how castrol does it i'll explain in the next slide about symphony air coolers so let me explain to you the uh, core product augmented product or intangible product by giving you the example of uh, an air cooler company which is Symphony Industrial Air Cooler. So what is the core product here? The core product is heavy duty industrial cooler for factories, for warehouse, for religious places. What is the selling point? Selling point is a cooler gives you economy over air conditioner, 66% economy in terms of savings on electricity. And a air cooler's payback is only three to four months. It's very silly, very, very strong unique selling proposition. The payback is only four to five months. So you buy a, a, a industrial air cooler, the electricity you will save over the over air conditioner is four to five. Uh, you will get back that money in four to five months. Then what is an augmented product? See, when they, they will uh, symphony has done some symphony has done some uh, research it has take, it has explained research findings to the customers and it says that the continuous influx of fresh air and if you have air cooled space it prevents allergies which are caused by poor ventilation which are caused by poor ventilation because of the because of the uh, because of the air cooler, there is good ventilation and it ensures, it ensures that there are no allergies because of poor ventilation. So this, they are, this is their point. They are driving at, driving at when they are talking to a factory or a school or a, let's say take a cafeteria where there is no cooling, where there is no cooling. So they are saying, and they are also telling you an intangible attribute. Intangible attribute. When they explain by studies, by quoting studies, that if the atmosphere or the workplace is air-cooled, if it is properly ventilated, it results in better staff morale. See, this is not, you can't feel the morale. You can't touch it. You can't smell it. Intangible high morale of your work staff. Second point which they are uh, trying to impress on the customers is when you use a air cooler, it has no greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases are those gases which are emitted which cause harm to the ozone layer. So imagine going to a uh, going to an educated proprietor of a factory and telling him that 
there are many months in india where you don't need to use a, a ac you can uh, make do with the air cooler okay and this also leads to low carbon footprint why it leads why it leads to low carbon footprint is because the consumption of energy is low carbon footprint is kind of a measure for how much co2 emission uh, you contribute to or how much energy you use because you know when you generate energy it also mainly comes from uh, activities which produces greenhouse gases in india if you see energy is coming from largely from coal very little energy is hydel energy or very little energy is nuclear uh, energy or it is coming from uh, hydrocarbons isn't it still to catch up uh, on the solar energy so when you are using less energy you are contributing to the lowering of carbon footprint these are intangible these appeals to the sense of a educated buyer so this is in this slide i have explained to you the positioning also to a intelligent buyer to a sensitive buyer somebody who believes in esg as you know esg which is environment society and governance in an environment social and governance esg factors have come to fore now a company is respected if it scores high on esg and if a company is respected it is reflected in the stock value of the company so i have explained to you the product attributes by giving you the example of castrol and giving you the example of symphony air cooler and how these also play these also play a part in the positioning strategy of the company i think a lecture on uh, business product attributes their characteristics and uh, the core product augmented product and uh, potential product or uh, intangible product attribute will not be complete unless we talk of the services also because services also come also contribute uh, or they are a large part of b2b business isn't it so in this slide quickly i will go through the key characteristics of business services so the key the first uh, attribute of uh, business services is intangibility intangibility because services are very difficult to evaluate prior to purchase uh, listen very carefully it is very difficult to evaluate a service prior to purchase you can uh, evaluate it by word of mouth maybe somebody else used that service and they say it is good because uh, so they are there is perceived subjectivity you know and uh, you can't touch it feel it see it run it and then feel it you know so services deny people uh, the opportunity to touch to feel to see or hear here of course not to see prior to only after you have consumed that service you can form a opinion of liking or not liking that so intangibility you have taken a you have hired the services of a lawyer only when he is presenting your case in the before the magistrate or how well he is preparing your brief you will know only after you have hired him isn't it second thing is perishability so first is intangibility second is perishability services are not capable of being stored why because they are created and consumed simultaneously they are created and consumed simultaneously in service also there is somewhat lack of ownership you know because there is no transfer of ownership prior to consumption you cannot order a, you can order a ac and you know you can get it replaced but uh, you cannot uh, order a legal service use that legal service and ask for replacement you know lack of ownership is there because the moment you have received the service after that you also don't own it because it's over you know there is a sense of inseparability inseparability in service because they are produced and consumed simultaneously so service providers and 
customers are in touch with each other during the point of consumption once again because services are produced and consumed simultaneously so service provider and the consumer so they are in they are in touch with each other at the point of consumption you when i say service provider it doesn't mean the owner of the company maybe you provided transportation services so your driver who's driving you so you are together in that and another concept is heterogeneity heterogeneous services involve the interaction of many people in their production and con consumption so this means that each service encounter is likely to be different making it uh, very difficult to deliver a consistent service experience for all people it's very difficult to say uh, that everyone was satisfied with the service let let us say you are providing entertainment service for your employees during the annual day and uh, there is a musical band which is providing that service so that musical band is playing it is interacting with many some people may really like that musical band some may not like it because everyone is having its his his or her own encounter i am responding to the band in a different manner and somebody else is responding to that band which is playing in a different manner so it is very difficult to deliver a consistent service because perception is different <laughs> everyone has his own encounter so imagine what will happen to a business service in metaverse you know metaverse is that artificial digital world huh? which metaverse meta and verse meta means beyond beyond and verse means beyond universe so there are many metaverse facebook is coming up with with with, with your own Uh, avatar or avatar as they call it so you can enter a metaverse and you can uh, your avatar can watch a music concert of uh, justin bieber so similarly many other can join digitally you know or uh, their avatars can join of course through their uh, computers and when they wear that uh, their glasses it will give them a feeling of receiving uh, of uh, seeing justin bieber live in flesh and blood so everybody is feeling different you know the good thing is everybody can be very near to justin bieber they can push their avatar to that place so intangibility perishability perishability means it's not stored intangibility means it is incapable of being touched felt heard heard or seen perhaps not heard because word of mouth the lack of ownership in the sense there is no real transfer it is consumed and gone inseparability means that the service provider and the user are in touch all the all the time you can't the moment you separate away service provider it is gone okay and heterogeneity means because everyone is having a individual encounter so these are some of the key characteristics of business services i think we will stop this lecture here and uh, in the next uh, lecture we will uh, discuss various things and among them uh, i think we will discuss uh, what what is meant by a industrial product mix what is the length of a product mix breadth of a product mix depth of a product mix and we will also uh, briefly understand what is meant by a product strategy so we leave it here today thank you very much for going through this video